Hey everyone, this is going to be a new series that I'm going to try out where I'm going to compare paid plugins to free plugins. My goal for this is going to be to find plugins that are very similar in terms of their function or sometimes even being based off of the same hardware model to see if it's really worth getting the paid version or if the free version works just as well. I figure a great place to start with the series would be the SSL native bus compressor and put it up against the Buster SE from Analog Obsession. The SSL native bus compressor costs 289 British pounds, and the Buster SE from Analog Obsession is free. Wow, for 289 British pounds, the bus compressor 2 must be a lot better, right? I've tried to set this up in a semi-scientific way, where I've level matched the two and tried to dial in the same amount of compression. For the first test, I'm going to shoot out both of these plugins on a complete mix that I made, which is a kind of ethereal trap beat. I've set these compressors up so that they have identical settings and are doing the exact same amount of gain reduction. For the first test, it's going to be 2 decibels of gain reduction. They both have the attack set to 30 milliseconds and the release set to 0.1 seconds, with a ratio of 4 to 1. 100% mix, and I didn't mess with any of the sidechain function for this initial test. Alright, before we get into the test, I very quickly have to point out that the metering on Buster SC appears to be wrong. It seems like the meter is showing twice the amount of gain reduction that's actually happening. For example, if the Buster SE meter says 8 decibels of gain reduction, you're actually doing 4 decibels of gain reduction. I've set up a short test to show that, and it appears to be true. I'm going to flip on this test oscillator that's set to minus 18 dB, and you're going to see that when it shows it's doing 8 decibels of gain reduction on Buster SE, it's actually doing 4. So remember, minus 18 for the test oscillator, and we should be doing 8 decibels of gain reduction. Minus 18. 8 decibels of gain reduction. But in reality, we're only doing four. That's something important to keep in mind for the rest of the video, because you're going to be seeing basically double the amount of gain reduction on the Buster SE meter than the SSL bus compressors meter, but they are matched. Just to show you, if I feed that exact same signal into the SSL native bus compressor, minus 18, turn it on, and minus 22. So that metering is correct. I tried using a pulsing sine wave to see if I would get a different result, but it appears to be the exact same. Okay, let's get into the test. Oversampling is set to 4x on both plugins. They have identical settings otherwise, and they're both dialing in two decibels of gain reduction. For this test, I have two channels set up, one with each compressor. We're gonna flip back and forth between the compressors so that you can listen to the differences and potentially the similarities between them. I would definitely recommend wearing headphones. We're gonna start with Analog Obsession Buster SE, and I'll keep flipping back and forth between the two. Honestly, for this 2 decibel gain reduction test, I think these are very similar bus compressors. The only places that I hear differences in them, I would say that the Buster SE is clamping down a little bit more on some of the transients. It's also kind of bringing out some of the mid to high range. You can hear it on the snare and the clap sound, and it sounds like it's doing a bit more saturation on the high end. The SSL bus compressor sounds a little bit cleaner overall, like there's less harmonics, uh, it's adding less color and character to the sound but I kind of like how the SSL bus comp is handling lower frequencies. I don't feel like it's clamping down on the transient materials like the kick and the snare as much. For this 2 dB gain reduction test, you really only see the compressor grabbing the low end, so that's where you should be hearing most of the difference. But I do feel like Buster SE is kind of bringing out the mid-range a little bit more. You can see that I did my best to match the levels here. We have almost the same RMS level for both compressors. 
but I was unable to dial in the peak setting identically for both of these compressors, and that appears to be because of the way that they process transients. As I said, I think Buster SC grabs the transients a bit more, or at least it sounds like it does, but it actually has a higher peak level than the SSL native bus comp, which was a little bit surprising. No matter how I dialed in the settings, I found that they always had that difference in tone in terms of grabbing the low end a little bit more on Buster SC and bringing out the mid-range presence a little bit more. Let's go back to the comparison one more time. I'll keep flipping back and forth between them, this time a little bit faster. Let's see if we can get the RMS level and the peak level a little bit closer. Seems like I got those levels a little bit closer. At least in this context, they sound very similar, and I think you could easily use Buster SE in place of this SSL native bus compressor. Okay, cool. Let's hop into the next test. I'm using the exact same track, but this time both compressors are set up for four decibels of gain reduction. Now let's try both of these bus compressors again on this complete mix with turbo engaged, which should make Buster SC more similar to the SSL bus compressor. I think this test really brings out some of the audible differences in the two plugins. To my ears, it sounds like the release time might be different on Buster than it is on the SSL comp. I'm not really sure why that is, they have the exact same release time. So unless there's a slight variation in the release time, I don't see why there should be a difference. Although you can audibly hear how they're handling transients a bit differently, it still sounds like Buster is clamping down a little bit more when the kick hits. I still think I like what the SSL native plugin is doing to the high end. It doesn't appear to be causing some of that crispiness that I'm hearing on something like the hi-hats that the Buster's causing. Okay, now let's test out these bus compressors on a bunch of different sources. I have them on an acoustic guitar bus with a hard pan left and a hard pan right acoustic guitar feeding into each compressor. I have them on a bass guitar, I have them on an acoustic drum bus, and I have them on kind of a hip-hop trap drum bus. Upon doing a little bit more research, it seems that with the turbo button engaged, it more closely mimics the original hardware. But when you load up this plugin, turbo is off, and it doesn't explicitly tell you within the plugin that having turbo on makes Buster SE react more similarly to the SSL native bus compressor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna toggle turbo on and off while we're testing to see how it changes the character of the compressor. All right, let's start with the SSL bus comp, acoustic guitar, bus.
Overall, to my ears, they don't sound that different. I can tell that when I turn turbo on on Buster SC, I'm doing a little bit more compression on the lower frequencies of the acoustic guitar. Not super apparent on a source like this. All right, let's move on to the bass test. I do think that I like the turbo mode enabled on Buster SC, uh, as it clamps down a little bit more on the low frequencies, but you can let the low frequencies breathe a little bit better with turbo off. Okay, now let's move on to an acoustic drum bus. In my opinion, I really prefer how the SSL bus compressor handles transient heavy material. It seems to do a little bit better of a job taming the peaks while not making the compression as audible. It sounds a lot cleaner. You can see that my RMS level is very closely matched between these two compressors, but that the peaks are a little bit louder on Buster SE. I've seen that across almost every source that I've tried these two on. You could also see that when I engage turbo mode on Buster SE, the kick was dialing in about 10 decibels of gain reduction. And when turbo was off, the kick was only dialing in about six decibels of gain reduction. So it does make quite a bit of a difference. Sorry, and by that I mean five decibels up here at 10 and three decibels here at six because this meter is double the amount of compression it's actually doing. In general though, I think that this transient heavy material, something like drums, does kind of show the differences between these two compressors. I would definitely favor the SSL bus compressor in this situation. Okay, and now we have a hip hop drum bus. These are trap style drums, you have a kick with a lot of sub bass, you have a very snappy mid rangey snare, and the turbo button makes a huge difference in this situation, and I'll show you that by toggling it on and off while soloing Buster SE. You can hear that we get a much more similar result between these two compressors when turbo is engaged, which makes me believe that the way that the SSL bus compressor works normally 
is how Buster SE works with the Turbo Engaged, and that would align with what the developer said on their website. I'm still very surprised that Turbo isn't automatically engaged when you turn the compressor on. You can hear that with the Turbo off, Buster SE clamps down a lot harder on some of the mid-range frequencies, like the top end of the kick and the snare snap kind of sounds. Don't forget you can always use the mix knob to mix in some of the processed compressed signal with your dry signal. It sounds good, regardless of how different it is from the SSL compressor. But the metering issue is still kind of problematic in my opinion, because I didn't even know that the metering was wrong on the plugin until somebody pointed it out online and I happened to read it. And then I went in and did the test myself, and it's true. The meter always registers twice as much gain reduction than what you're actually doing to the audio signal. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into both of these plugins. I'm going to bring them up in Plugin Doctor, and we're going to compare the differences. The chart that you can see right here is for the SSL bus compressor. Currently with no oversampling on, we have a fundamental frequency of 43 hertz that you can see right here, and everything above it is the series of harmonics that the plugin is creating. Now I'm going to unmute Buster SE, and you can see the harmonics that Buster SE is creating. You can see with the SSL bus compressor that it's creating louder harmonics, but that Buster SE is actually creating more harmonics, which could be what I'm hearing in terms of it adding a bit more saturation to the signal as a whole. We have all these harmonics around here, and I'm not 100% sure if this is foldback, if it's hitting Nyquist, and these are, these are basically harmonics that are folding back in the form of aliasing. And one way you can look at that better is if I change the frequency that I'm feeding it to 1000 Hertz. So here's the SSL bus compressor. That's the fundamental frequency. And here's the series of harmonics it's creating, and everything behind this basically is aliasing. With no oversampling, that makes sense. But if I flip on oversampling, you can see how much that diminishes and that there's barely any aliasing going on now. Now with Buster SE, let's just fix this. Okay, you can see some foldback aliasing as well. And here's the harmonic series it's creating. Now if I turn on oversampling, it also gets rid of quite a bit of aliasing behind it. But yeah, it does look like the SSL bus compressor is creating more audible harmonics. Now let's take a look at the dynamics of both of these compressors, ultimately the most important part. This top line that you can see here is the SSL bus compressor, and this bottom line is Buster SE. From what I can see, the knee of these compressors is significantly different, with the SSL bus compressor having a much harder knee, and Buster SE having a more gradual, softer knee. The advantage of having a softer knee would be that it's a much more gradual curve between an uncompressed signal and a compressed signal, but it's also the same on the release, where it's going to take longer for the signal to become uncompressed. The disadvantage with the softer knee is also that you're going to begin compression at a lower level. I'm kind of surprised by the difference in the knees of these compressors, and both of these don't have any option to control the knee, otherwise we'd be able to much more closely match these two curves. Here's a little bit more detailed zoom into the actual curves of the compressors. With this view, you can get a much better idea of just how gradual the shape, or I believe it's called the transfer curve, of the Buster SE is, compared to the SSL, where the signal really gets up until about this point, this knee, and then it begins compressing, whereas compression with Buster SE starts all the way down here. And that might be why you're hearing Buster SE grab the transients a lot more, because the second a transient or any loud sound passes right about here, or at minus 18 dB, according to this, it's going to begin compression. So a louder signal is going to basically cause the compressor to jump much sooner than the SSL native bus compressor would, which is up here around, it looks like minus 8 or minus 10 dB. Very interesting. In terms of what's different between these two plugins, you'll see that we have these buttons up here, Turbo and Xformer. Xformer is in and out transformers. If you engage it, the integrated circuits will be replaced with transformers. This will change the impedance, character, and overall sound of the compressor. I'm getting all this information from the developer's website, by the way. The Turbo Mode button will help the compressor affect the whole signal range. Otherwise, the compressor will focus on mid-frequencies. This mod is added to keep the original side of hardware. Here we have the sidechain section and the transient section. This boost, 0 to 10 dB, while boosting attack, it will re reduce the decay and release of the signal to make the compressor more sensitive with only attacks and peaks. Tilt, which has a 1 kHz center, 
can go down minus 6 dB and up 6 dB. It's placed before boost to send only dedicated range to boost. So boost will affect only given frequency range and will boost only this range's transients. If tilt is default, boost will affect overall transients. Of course, wet and dry mix is pretty self-explanatory. Both plugins have a sidechain high pass filter here, which you can use to roll off some low frequencies so that the low frequencies aren't activating the compressor as aggressively. You also have this mid-range sidechain filter here, which is set to 1500 Hertz. You can either go minus six dB or up plus six dB to, I guess, accentuate how much of that 1500 Hertz you want activating the compressor. That's pretty interesting. I'll have to try that out and see how it changes the sound. And then this high frequency percentage knob here, I'm not totally sure I understand what the developer's saying, but he's saying that it's set at 10 kilohertz and it's zero decibels to minus 10 decibels will work like famous optical tube compressor and better help you control the high frequencies. It's pretty interesting. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed the comparison of these two plugins. In terms of a final conclusion, I really don't think that the SSL bus comp is worth the crazy asking price. If it's on sale with the SSL native channel strip, it actually could be a pretty good value. But that amount of money for this bus compressor when there's a free alternative that performs similarly is kind of crazy. You're paying more for the name than anything else. There are some issues with Buster SE. I hope they get dealt with and that would make it even more competitive against the SSL native compressor. But when you're dialing in a small amount of compression, I don't think there's a huge difference between these two plugins. If you're using one of these on every single channel in your mix or every single bus in your mix, I could see there being a lot of value to having the SSL native bus compressor as I felt it was a little bit, a little bit easier on certain frequency ranges. Also the metering on Buster is off. It seems to be two to one as in it's always gonna show twice as much reduction as you're actually doing. And that could be problematic in certain circumstances. Ultimately you should be mixing with your ears so it shouldn't make that much of a difference. The additional controls of Buster are pretty cool. I don't think they make it you know, revolutionary compared to the SSL native bus comp. For being free, I think it's absolutely worth trying out Buster, even if you already own the SSL native compressor. You might be able to get a little bit different tone with it, though I would favor the SSL native bus compressor a little bit because it doesn't have some of the issues that Buster has and it appears to be a little bit cleaner overall. The difference in price is crazy and there's no reason that you should be spending that much money on a single bus compressor in my opinion. I really appreciate you taking the time to check out this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you like this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel and tell me if you like this style of video. I'd love to make more comparison videos like this. I find it very interesting. Thanks again and have a good day.